Oh my gosh, for those of you out there that have contacts, you know when you have something in your eye and you're like, this must be the biggest, like, it must be like a stone. Like, I must have gotten a, an actual piece of stone or ice in my eyeball. It hurts so much. So then your eye starts wadding and you're like, okay, I need to take out my contact. But then you're faced with a dilemma because, of course, you're wearing makeup. Of course you're wearing makeup. So you have to decide, do I take out my contact and risk ruining my makeup or do you leave your contact in and risk ruining your eyeball? So that, that was me about 20 minutes ago. And I decided to risk ruining my makeup and take out my contact. So if my, if my my makeup looks a little bit off, <laughs> you, now you know why. Okay, eyeball, are we good? I think we're good. I think we're good, so let's get into this. Hello everyone, I am here today to share with you guys a video that I am super excited to share with you guys. I've been working on it for a while now, and I finally get to share with you the results of what I've been researching. Because as you guys know, I love researching products. It's like, that's my jam. So today we are gonna be doing the five and five for liquid lipsticks. And essentially what this video is, is testing out five different products over the course of five different days, judging them against each other and seeing which one is the best and which one is the worst. And so today's topic is obviously liquid lipsticks. So I'm gonna be testing out if they are smudge proof, budge proof, are they kiss proof, are they long lasting all day? I'm gonna share with you guys what it looks like in the application, what I liked, what I didn't like, and I'm gonna show you what it looked like at the end of the day as well. And if you guys are interested in seeing some more five in five makeups, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up so I know that you guys wanna see more of these and leave me a comment below and let me know what topics within the whole makeup community of things that you want to see, whether it's foundations or mascaras, black eyeliners, anything like that. I want to know what you guys want to see next. So first, before I get into it, I want to share the rules. Number one, I removed everything off of my lips, so I was starting with a blank canvas. Then I would apply the product and I would wear the product all day without any touch-ups. I wouldn't be very careful with my lipstick in any way, shape, or form. I also tried to pick colors all within the same range of tones. So I picked a lot of reds and purpley, like deeper tones because I felt like that was going to show me how good the product was gonna be because there are a lot of really great liquid lipsticks out there that are lighter colors. And I think the lighter colors are just longer wearing in general. And then at the end of the day, I sat down and I showed you guys what the lipstick looks like. I did not touch it at all. I wanted to show you guys exactly what it looked like. Sometimes it was still pretty good, and sometimes it was a disaster. So now with that, let's get into the first product. And the first one we're gonna be talking about is the Smashbox Always On Matte Liquid Lipstick. So some of the things I really liked about this, number one is the applicator. I love the fact that it's short like a lipstick. It just makes it much easier to have control in the application because it's shorter and it has a really, really fine tip applicator at the end, so it makes it really easy to get those nice sharp lines. I also love the formula. It is very lightweight. It feels like nothing on the lips at all. It goes on super, super pigmented, and they also have a really wide range of colors. You can see from the application that when I'm applying it, it goes on super, super pigmented right off the bat. You only need one swipe of it to get really good color payoff, and you can see what they have is the no drop reservoir, so all the product kind of locks in there, so you only need to remove the product once out of the container and apply it all over the lips and you're good to go. It is also very long lasting. I have tried everything from the super vampy colors to the reds to the light colors and overall across the line I found it to be quite long wearing. You can see now in my end of the day wrap up, it is feathering a little bit on the inside of lips which, spoiler alert, is kind of the same across the entire realm of the liquid lipsticks, although I do have some tips on how to avoid that, um, which I will share at the end of this video on my wrap up. This end of the day wrap up was probably around 11 p.m., well beyond the eight hours that they had initially said. So the fact that it's lasted that long and looks like that is pretty impressive to me. Next up is the Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipstick. This is a very, very popular one. You guys have probably seen it all over YouTube. Tons of people talk about this particular line. Um, there's 28 different shades to choose from. They're super high coverage, long lasting liquid lipstick. Sticks. Lolita, Lolita is one of their all-time bestsellers. It's their like dusty mauve tone kind of one. Mauve? Mauve? So the color that I chose to go with is called Vampira, which is a deep, dark, reddy brown. Really, really pretty. However, you can see on application, I learned something very quickly about this particular line, is when you apply it, you need to let it sit on your lips and entirely dry before you blot your lips together. So you can tell by my confused face, I don't know what's going on. But I eventually learned that you apply it, you let it dry entirely, and then it does not move. But overall, in terms of pros, I love that it feels very feather light on the lips. It's again, very a moussey feel to it. Cons, I don't love the applicator. It is a little bit too rounded for me. It makes it difficult for the darker colors to really apply very nicely. And it's very, very long. Like it's a very long 
applicator. So it just makes it a little bit unwieldy for me. And then the other con is me learning that I need to let the layer dry before I did any sort of touch-ups. And now you can see from the end of the day wrap up, the color is smudging and smearing. It is obviously feathering on the inside of the lips as well. That could be because I had to apply two layers. It could be because of the product itself. It's I've had really good experiences with their lighter colors to be very, very long lasting. Before I ate anything, it was bulletproof. Like it was not coming off on anything. I was sipping water, coffee, everything like that. It was not budging. So that's one thing to keep in mind um, with this particular color. But food though, <laughs> that was the big enemy of this particular one. Now on to the most expensive one and that is the Chanel Rouge Allure Ink. And this is a matte liquid lip color. It has a second skin texture. It's supposed to be velvety feel. It has all sorts of oils in it to make your, your lips feel all good. Blah, 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 blah. Overall, I did not like this at all. The only thing that I really liked about this product was the fact that it has a short applicator like the Smashbox one. However, all the product builds up at the tip, so you have to wipe it off, otherwise you're gonna get like a big blob, and it's like, ah. Oh. But the color was not long wearing at all. I had to go to an eye appointment, and it was like right after breakfast, and I noticed immediately that the color had worn off almost entirely off my lips. So I actually applied another layer before I went out, and this is what it still looked like by the end of the day. I was really excited about this product because it's so expensive and they talk a big game about being this amazing product but I'm gonna say like this was not worth the money for me I was much happier with the other options I chose in this experiment and this one was just a big <laughs> now on to a drugstore option and this is the Rimmel London Provocalypse 16 hour kiss proof lip color and the color I chose is kiss me you fool and it has the lip color in one end and then it has like a clear top coat to kind of lock it in on the other end so you can see I'm applying the red lip color. It's very pretty. It's not as pigmented, I want to say, as like the Smashbox one. Like I kind of had to like fiddle with the formula a little bit, um, but still very, very nice. And then you can see on the other end, I couldn't really tell if maybe it was the one that I bought and it just was empty or something, or it was just a very, very light formula. It's not very um, gloss. Like I was assuming it was going to be like, like a top coat basically. And it wasn't like that at all. And I'm like, well, hopefully I'm applying something. So first let's talk with the pros. This was probably the most kiss-proof, smudge-proof product that I had. Like I was giving Luke, my little baby boy, tons and tons of kisses and it was not coming off at all on him. That was insane in terms of like the long wear lipsticks that I chose. This was the only one that had zero transfer at all. I was super, super impressed with it. You'll see in the end of the day wrap up right now um, that it did almost lighten in terms of color. Like it started out a very rich ruby red and then it sort of faded to this pink, which is weird. The cons, it is probably the stickiest, like tackiest feeling lips, uh, liquid lipstick of the ones that I tried. It did dry down a bit, but it feels like you have a like a sheet mask on your lips almost. But I, I will take that any day for the amount of transfer freeness that it has. It was super, super awesome. So I was really impressed with that. The formulation on the lips was, but like, oh my gosh completely transfer proof. And lastly is a lip color from ColourPop. And I'm gonna say right now, I thought this was an ultra matte lip. Turns out that this is an ultra satin lip, but they literally look the same. So that's my bad. But it is supposed to be super, super long wearing. It's just not supposed to be entirely transfer proof. So I will speak to the experience from this, but I will also speak to my experience with the matte lipsticks as well. So this is in the color Hutch, which is this nice deep sort of a purple tone. Um, and it's very, very pretty. I've talked about the ColourPop lipsticks before. Actually, I did a whole buy or buy on the ultra matte lips and their satin lips. So first of all, in the application, it's very nice. I've used the matte ones as well. I find that the difference between the satin and the matte is that the matte one is like matte matte. Like you feel like all of the moisture is being sucked out of your lips. It is intense. So if your lips get really dry very easily, I would not recommend them, but the satin ones are very nice. And you can see like the color is beautiful. It looks gorgeous on the lips. It's like that dark, deep, beautiful fall winter shade. However, by the end of the day, obviously because it's not entirely transfer proof, you can see it has worn off the lips quite a bit. Like the color has faded a lot. It's faded on the inside, but it's not 
crazy like streaky and like all over the face like a lipstick would be by the end of the day. I've used some of the lighter shades and they're insane. Like they last all day. There is no budging at all. Same with some of like the reds I've used as well. And then you flip over to some of the dark plummy tones and it, they fade almost in patchiness for the ultra matte lip. For me at least, that's been my experience. But overall, there is such a massive selection. They are a really great price point. I think they're about $6 per. And while this one is not entirely kiss proof, I think it is quite a nice deal and you do get some nice color payoff for it. So now my overall roundup. So the first thing that I wanna say in terms of liquid lipstick, some things to watch out for. Number one, make sure that your lips are entirely scrubbed down. You wanna exfoliate them really, really well apply some sort of a moisturizing product, let it sit on there for like two to three minutes and then wipe it entirely off. You want your lips to be entirely and completely dry before you apply any of the liquid lipsticks. Next up, it seems that the trend across all of these is if you eat anything that's greasy in any way, shape or form, let's say it's from oils and salads or greasy french fries, it is going to destroy your liquid lipstick. And then in terms of which one was my absolute favorite, I would have to say it would be the Smashbox one would be my favorite. I've I've tried a bunch of different ones within the range and I still think that is by far my favorite one of all of the ones that I've tried. I think it is a fantastic formula. I think the application is really nice. I think it is totally and completely worth the money if you want a good long wearing lipstick. The second up would be the Rimmel one for me. I just didn't love how it felt on the lips compared to the Smashbox one, but it did definitely have zero transfer throughout the day at all, which was incredible. And it's a drugstore, which is pretty awesome. Um, my least favorite has to be the Chanel one. So save your money on that one. It was definitely not a good buy for me. I just found that it just had no staying power whatsoever. Um, and it was just completely smudged and disaster by the end of the day. And that's everything for this video. Give it a thumbs up if you wanna see more of these five in five type product videos. And um, I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos every Tuesday and Thursday and new videos on my Rachel's Life channel every Saturday. I will put a link in the cards in case you guys are interested in that. I hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful week so far and I'll see you guys all at my next video. Love you girls. Mwah.